This is Stephen Todman, pediatric cardiologist at LSU in Shreveport, and today we're going to talk about SVC syndrome. According to the ABP content outline, you will be required to recognize the clinical findings associated with SVC syndrome. So let's get to it. Superior vena cava syndrome results from any condition that leads to obstruction of blood flow through the SVC. And this obstruction can be a result of external compression and or thrombosis. So blood flow within the SVC becomes obstructed and venous collaterals form, which results in alternative pathways for the return of venous blood to the right atrium. And collateral, ve collateral veins can come from the azagous, internal mammary, lateral thoracic, paraspinous, or the esophageal venous systems. So this slide is a quick review of the anatomy of the SVC and the veins of the mediastinum. These venous collaterals can dilate over several weeks, and even when well-developed collateral drainage patterns are present, the CVP remains elevated, producing the char characteristic signs and symptoms of SVC syndrome. It's important to know that the interstitial edema of the head and neck is visually striking, but it's generally of little clinical consequence, with the exception of situations where the edema can narrow the lumen of the nasal passages, larynx, and uh, potentially compromise um, the function of the larynx and pharynx, which can cause dyspnea, stridor, cough, uh, hoarseness, and dysphagia. So clinical manifestations are what the ABP wants you to know. So let's highlight this uh, particularly. So the clinical diagnosis of SV syndrome, C syndrome is made on the basis of the typical signs and symptoms of central venous obstruction. But regardless of the etiology, dyspnea is the most common symptom. In addition, patients frequently complain of facial swelling or head fullness, and this may be exacerbated by bending forward or lying down. Other symptoms that you can see are arm swelling, cough, chest pain, or dysphagia, uh, and patients with uh, cerebral edema can have headaches, confusion, or possibly coma. The physical exam features that are most common are facial edema, distension of the veins in the neck and on the chest wall, and less frequently you can see arm edema, cyanosis, and facial plethora. This is a good example of facial plethora. This image highlights the enlarged veins over the anterior chest wall that are seen in this particular patient who's a 65-year-old smoker. Treatment is ultimately aimed at the underlying cause of the SVC syndrome. So here's a clinical question. All of the following are true of SVC syndrome except A, tinnitus is the most common symptom. B, patients frequently complain of facial swelling or head fullness, which may be exacerbated by bending forward or lying down. C, other symptoms include arm swelling, cough, chest pain, or dysphagia. And D, the most common physical exam findings are facial edema and distension of the veins in the neck and on the chest wall. I'll give you a moment to select your answer. And the answer is A. Dyspnea is actually the most common symptom. Thank you.